Hi there guys, I hope you have had a good day. Now, the war of words has begun between Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. Obviously, they bumped into one another while in Marbella, both there for the same reason, to be on vacation. But work came to them, or they both came to one another. They saw one another and had a brief chat about Joshua beating Pulev and Tyson Fury beating Wilder. Then Undisputed can happen. Interestingly enough, no mention of Anthony Joshua's WBO mandatory, Alexander Usyk, and no mention of Dillian White, the WBC mandatory to Tyson Fury. So that is interesting. I know maybe it's not much to go on, but still, maybe they are planning on having one fight each, then Undisputed. I guess they are planning on having two fights next year, meaning that, I mean, can they have three fights next year? Because they would have to. They are only going to fight once each this year, and likely next year, Undisputed will happen between them two. Two fights in 2021, and likely they will be the only two fights that Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury have. Now, Anthony Joshua had this to say about meeting Tyson Fury in Marbella. What was cheeky is he couldn't even get out of his car to offer me a drink. It wasn't planned. He was driving down, I was walking down. I don't know how he saw me. He's probably following me around. And when asked about Tyson Fury's recent wins and his resume, he had this to say also. You have to do it repeatedly against championship level fighters to gain my respect. Fury hasn't done that. So obviously Anthony Joshua respects Tyson Fury, but he has explained that Tyson Fury hasn't necessarily fought back to back top level opponents. He went from Klitschko to Sefer Seferi, then Pianetta, Deontay Wilder, Tom Schwartz, Otto Wallen, then Deontay Wilder again. But Tyson Fury must fight Deontay Wilder again next. So that is going back to back, top level fighter. Or, I mean, yeah, Deontay Wilder is a top level fighter. Let's not take anything away from him just because I'm not his biggest fan, but he's a world level fighter. I mean, he was undefeated for many years. 10 title defenses of the WBC. Biggest puncher, probably in the heavyweight division. So, yeah, let's give him props. Top level opponent in Deontay Wilder. Tyson Fury must fight him back to back. So while maybe no Tyson Fury hasn't fought back to back top level opponents in the past, he will have to in his next fight against Deontay Wilder. So we will learn a lot about Tyson Fury when he has to do that. But Tyson Fury is better conditioned now mentally than he was before. So maybe I think he will deal with that, to be honest. I mean, not maybe, he will. I think he will beat Deontay Wilder quite conclusively in the third fight. But what Anthony Joshua is alluding to is the fact that Tyson Fury has not fought back-to-back -back opponents like he has. Obviously, Anthony Joshua won the world title in uh, June 2016. I believe it was June, may have been May. But anyway, in 2016 against Charles Martin, from that point on, he did fight top opponents. Maybe not Dominic Brazil, but Klitschko, Takam, B-level, I would say, but then Joseph Parker, Alexander Povetkin, Andy Ruiz Jr., Andy Ruiz Jr. So he has consistently fought top heavyweights back to back since being a world champion. Now, obviously, Tyson Fury has never defended a world championship. And that is not Tyson Fury's fault. Obviously, he had those mental health problems, so it was out of Tyson Fury's hands. So ultimately, he did not defend the belts he won in Dusseldorf against Klitschko, but he will have to defend his WBC World Championship and Ring Magazine Championship against Deontay Wilder in November or December, whenever that fight happens. But Tyson Fury will then have to fight back-to-back -back top opponent and defend his world title for the first time. Anthony Joshua has done it. Tyson Fury, that is the one thing he has to prove. I mean, Tyson Fury can be considered as either number one or number two. Everyone has it differently. Everyone has either Anthony Joshua there or Tyson Fury there. But what really matters about that is you either consider Anthony Joshua as number one and Tyson Fury number two, or Tyson Fury number one, Anthony Joshua number two. That means that this is a genuine 50-50 fight for Undisputed. Number one versus number two. Doesn't matter what order they go in, that order will be sorted out when they fight. Now, not only did Anthony Joshua tear into Tyson Fury's resume and question, obviously, him defending titles and his opponents and all of that, he also 
questioned, why does everyone fear Tyson Fury? Why is he so fearsome? Why is he the guy that is almost unbeatable, have this aura of invincibility about him? Because he just faints and has a bit of speed and that's it. That is kind of Anthony Joshua's assessment of Tyson Fury's abilities. This is what he had to say. What have you seen from Fury? A couple of feints moving around? What have you seen that makes him seem so intimidating? Speed? If the sport is lacking so much talent then all you need is feints and movement to be classed as a great of this generation. With hard work, motivation and studying, you can overcome that. So what do people see in Fury that is so fearsome, intimidating, that he cannot be touched at the top level? I take him as serious as any other challenger of course, but resume? It's taken him a long time to grow. His fight with Vladimir Klitschko was the first real challenge and he overcome it, but it took him 8 years to build his experience and confidence, then he had 2 years out and fought Deontay Wilder. He hasn't been in the deep end for long enough to show me that he can swim there for a long time. You have to continuously prove that you belong there, you don't just come there once or twice. So there we go, that is Anthony Joshua's assessment of Tyson Fury's resume, his fighting ability, his skill and all of that. Now, I mean overcoming those feints and speed and all of that with a bit of hard work and dedication, there's more to it than that. There's a whole game plan that needs to be put together and executed by Anthony Joshua to beat Tyson Fury. Obviously Anthony Joshua is breaking it down piece by piece. This is what he must do. Tyson Fury is a layered individual. He's going to go through those layers and have a remedy for every single one of them. The one thing that Tyson Fury brings to the table that Anthony Joshua has not seen before is he's so big, moves so well and the press conferences. Obviously Tyson Fury is going to try and get in AJ's head. Obviously the Andy Ruiz Jr situation, that's going to come up a lot. Tyson Fury will use that as fuel because Tyson Fury is the king of mind games and it's just whether Anthony Joshua is going to bite or whether he is going to stay strong and not be brought down to playground antics when in the press conferences because if he gets dragged into that with Tyson Fury then it's going to be very difficult for him to pull himself back because once Tyson Fury gets someone there he makes him stay there. He done it to Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder will always struggle against Tyson Fury now because Tyson Fury is in his head rent free. Anthony Joshua I believe is mentally stronger than Deontay Wilder and will deal with it a lot better but ultimately it's very important from that first press conference he does not allow Tyson Fury to get into his head because if he gets there he will remain there until the end of the fight. Now having said that Anthony Joshua has never faced anyone like Tyson Fury and Tyson Fury I would imagine is a lot more difficult to anticipate and to work out fighting when you're in the ring with him. He's a physically imposing man and I would imagine that it is so much different watching him than it is in the ring with him. Obviously it's going to be but ultimately you see some fighters who you just think they're so slow or they move so methodically that it would be easy to set traps or catch them like a Joe Joyce maybe but once you are in the ring with them it's a completely different ball game. It's a lot different. So that will play factors in the fight between Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua but still Tyson Fury has also never fought anyone like Anthony Joshua. The speed, the explosiveness, the movement as well, underrated. Look at the Ruiz 2 fight if you don't believe me. So Anthony Joshua is the complete package. He can box at range, he can fight at that medium distance, he can also fight on the inside. On the inside as well, he's going to be able to be a lot stronger than say Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder never wanted to work on the inside with Tyson Fury. Anthony Joshua will because Anthony Joshua will be likely the inside fighter against Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury fights well on the inside, especially considering the size of him, but so does Anthony Joshua. And I know that the inside fighting game failed Anthony Joshua in the first Ruiz fight, but that was because Ruiz is an inside fighter, out and out. He isn't ever outboxing Anthony Joshua on the outside. He needed to get on the inside. That's his game. So that is why Anthony Joshua was kind of trumped at that point. And AJ got silly, lost his shape, and ultimately we know what happened from then on. But against Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua is a smaller guy, throws better short shots on the inside. So that means that Anthony Joshua will be the inside fighter going in there with Tyson Fury. 
And again, as I said, against Deontay Wilder, Deontay Wilder did not want to trade up on the inside. I don't know really what Deontay Wilder was trying to achieve. I don't know what his game plan was because, I mean, I mean, he didn't really do much. I mean, he has that right hand and I guess he just relies on that. And Tyson Fury took that away from him. But Anthony Joshua doesn't just have a right hand. He has a left hook. He has an uppercut as well. Throws great combinations. As Deontay Wilder throws one, Anthony Joshua will throw punches in bunches. That is something new for Tyson Fury to deal with and contemplate. Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury. Both of them have never fought a fighter like one another. That is what is so great about this fight. Number one, number two, doesn't matter what order you put them in. It is still for the number one spot in the heavyweight division. This is undisputed. Anyway, guys, what are your thoughts on this? Make sure you leave your thoughts in the comments below. Leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. Thanks, guys.